Hi, welcome to Drinkosaurus, where we take ancient cocktail recipes into the modern era. My name's Matt, I'm your host, and let's get drinking. This is a continuation from our previous episode, where I gave you a shopping list of five different ingredients to buy to make five different cocktails for just about $100. In this episode, I'm gonna make one of my own that's completely different from the other four cocktails. So I'm gonna bring you in on that process and let's get to it. As I mentioned in the previous episode, the four cocktail recipes that I gave you were all pretty spirit forward. So let's make something a little lighter, maybe something citrusy. Um, I have an idea of what I want for this cocktail, but I haven't actually made it yet. So this will give you an idea of how, given some ingredients, I work through my process of creating something new. So to really mix things up, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take out the rye. So I'm gonna try to make something that doesn't use our spirit at all. Bye, bye, bye. So that's gonna leave us with four ingredients that are pretty low in alcohol content, which I think will immediately solve the problem of our drinks being pretty spirit forward. However, we have to be tricky to not make it kind of just taste like alcoholic juice. So here's what I'm thinking. I think the Campari and the Averna work really well together. So I'm gonna start by just mixing them in a one-to-one -one ratio and let's go from there. For now, we're gonna say bye to the vermouth and bye to the bitters. Bye-bye. <laughs> We have our mixing glass, and I'm probably going to shake this cocktail, but I will mix everything in this clear glass so you can see the process. So I'm gonna start with probably a one-to-one -one ratio of the Campari and the Averna. I don't wanna favor one or the other. So let's start with an ounce of each of them. Look at how red that is. Ugh, beautiful. Don't spill this on your carpet and we'll do the Averna. So the Campari is adding a very strong herbal flavor and the Averna is gonna sweeten it up a bit. But since none of these are a high alcohol content, I believe both of them are below 60 proof, it's gonna be pretty, pretty subtle, pretty subtle in its flavorings. I'm gonna mix these together, give it a quick little taste. That's actually, that's nice. It's, it's got a little bit of everything. It's hard to really say what it tastes like, but at the same time, the taste isn't so off-putting that it's jarring. So I think that's a good base. What it tastes like right now, it doesn't taste like a cocktail. It kind of just tastes like we made a new sort of liqueur from mixing these two together. So what I think I'm gonna do now is, in my goal to make this very different from the other cocktails, is I'm going to add some citrus. So let me get my lemon and my juicer and we'll make our first cocktail that has citrus in it. Yay! <laughs> Here is my lemon juicer and my lemon. And you don't have to watch this part, so I hope it goes in fast motions. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hold on. Gotta, really gotta get your elbows in it. <laughs> you might have noticed that this looks like a cheap $5 lemon juicer that you can get from the grocery store. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> but it gets the job done. And there we go. That lemon is fucking destroyed. <laughs> what do I, I don't, I don't know what I say. The lemon, the lemon has been juiced. It's really important that when you're adding citrus to actually juice a lemon, it tastes so much better than the like store-bought lemon juice, which you get in the plastic lemon container. I'm not even sure if that's actual lemon juice. And you also have like sweet and sour mix. Don't use those, use an actual, use an actual lemon. And in the previous episode, I talked about your cocktail is only as good as your um, like lowest quality ingredient. So if you can, adding lemon juice is a quick way to really spice up a drink. And by spice up, I mean citrus up. Anyway, I'm gonna add a half ounce um, the reason that I'm not adding more is pr my preference is if you add more than a half ounce of citrus, the drink becomes too sour in my opinion. So I always like to start with a half ounce. I'm gonna give this a little mix. Having full knowledge that the lemon isn't properly emulsified if you're mixing it, which is why we shake it, but it'll give me a good sense of if we had to add anything else. Ooh, nice. So what that does is it adds, really it's in the mouthfeel, so you can like feel the citrus in there, but the lemon makes it start tasting like an actual cocktail rather than just making a new 
um, liqueur that we're drinking neat. And in the spirit of if it's good, don't try to mess it up, I think we're ready to go with this one. So I'm gonna shake it up and if need be, we'll add some stuff afterwards. So I have my cocktail shaker full of ice. So I'm gonna just transfer my drink in there. Normally you would just mix everything in the shaker, but I wanted you to see everything, everything. So we got our ice in there. We're gonna put the top on and I don't have the top. <laughs> I'm gonna go get that. Here it is. All right, now, now our cocktail won't go everywhere. And we're gonna give it a shake. We just need to shake it enough to mix it and to chill it, probably like 10 seconds. And you don't have to go super aggressive. We know you're strong. There we go. So that's sufficiently chilled. My fingers are cold. <laughs> that's the test. If it's cold, it's good. I'm gonna serve this up in a coupe glass because it'll look nice. When you add lemon juice, there is little bits of pulp which aren't the most pleasing things to drink. So I'm gonna use the strainer to, oh my gosh, look at that color. <gasps> it's beautiful. I forgot what I was saying, but that color is, wow. That looks like a ancient elixir or something. It, does that look nice? Cause now that I'm looking at it more, it kind of seems like if you're like bathtub flooded. I don't know, it's, it's a nice color. I would garnish this with a lemon rind because it has lemon in it and it fits the theme, but <laughs> my lemon's gone. You, you saw, you saw how gone that lemon was. So I have an orange here and I'm going to struggle to find my peeler, here it is. Um, so kind of fitting with the citrus theme, we'll garnish this with a orange rind. <laughs> Someone is an expert and you're not gonna fly away this time. So I'm going to express the orange oils over, give it a little loop-de-loop, -loop. give it a little twisty twist, put it inside, and I present to you drink number five. The Mambo, Mambo number five. five. No, I don't know. What's a good no, I mean, it just came so quickly, that could be it. <laughs> I'll play like a, a second and a half of the song. One. <laughs> we don't want to get arrested. All right, let's taste it. Hopefully it tastes as good as it did when I tasted it prior. So on the nose, it smells like orange, which makes sense because there's orange rind. Um, there's no spirit in here, so you're not getting like the alcoholic fumes on it, um, which to some people, that's actually a benefit because they don't want like all alcohol up in their nose. Ooh. Ah, so chilling the citrus really makes it come alive. I think it really benefits from being cold. And the interesting thing is the lemon plus the Campari makes it almost taste like grapefruit. And by almost, I mean, it tastes a lot like grapefruit um, in a really pleasing way. And then the Averna adds some more herbal characters to it. So this tastes really grapefruity. And to my surprise too, despite having low alcohol content and the lemon juice diluting that further, it still tastes like a robust cocktail. Like it doesn't taste watered down at all. Um, it's actually pretty nice. It's really refreshing. Where the other four drinks that we talked about in the previous episode are for like those cold, wintry, dark nights by the fireplace. This one's a bit more refreshing, maybe more summertime drink that you can make with your ingredients. <laughs> this is the first episode we're filming in a series of four, so I can't have more sips of that or else you know what happens. <laughs> So with this episode and with the one before it, hopefully you have a lot of ideas and are inspired to go out there and get a bunch of different ingredients to start your own collection, your own bar of different ingredients that you can make cocktails with. It's really intimidating and difficult to start at first because there are just so many options and it's hard to know which ones to pick. And if you're like me, you want to make sure that every purchase you make is worthwhile. Um, I only started from having a couple of bottles of booze and pretty much each week I would buy one new thing, my like new ingredient of the week. And as I said on the previous episode, making sure whatever new thing you buy, you can make at least a couple of things with. And this is a good way to get started because if you think about all the different cocktails we made from five ingredients, each one you add just makes the possibilities expand quite a bit. 
And there's still a lot of possibility with the ingredients that we have to make even more. Drinkosaurus is a production of Little Giant Monsters. If you want to see more things we're working on, you can check us out on different social media platforms. Also, if you like what we're doing, please consider supporting us on Patreon. If you have any ideas for future videos, leave them down in the comments. I would be happy to read them. That's all for today's episode. Stay thirsty. <laughs> Stay thirsty. No, don't. Drink a lot of water. That's all for today's episode. Keep on mixing and drink responsibly. Oh, I like it. Yay, I did something good. Oh, bye.